Welcome back guys, you're still watching The Spot. We're still hanging out here in Lagos and we have been joined by two awesome guests. Ibuka, would you stop acting a fool and tell us who our guests are? Who am I acting a fool? You were throwing things. At? Zina. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. You threw All right. this. We have guests. Can you be in? Okay. So, welcome. Welcome. We're not yes. going to be like this. <laughs> welcome. Yes, we are. So, if you don't know them, if you don't live in Lagos. Or Nigeria. Because you, you can actually listen to them outside of Lagos. Yeah. But if you don't live in Lagos and you might not be familiar with them, mm -hmm. they work on a radio station in Lagos. Cool, correct, smooth station. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Mr. Thompson and... <laughs> Holy storms. storms. Yeah. Holy yeah. storms. Yeah. Yes. Nice to have you guys here. You guys you guys work yeah. together, right? Yeah. Yes. Not just in the same place, at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're on the same, same you're on air at the same time. Yeah. Same show. Very Who's very the sidekick? Go go. <laughs> I, I, I would have to say I would have to say I would have to say yeah. <laughs> like you see how he started. Yeah. Okay. Okay. She I don't look like it. a sidekick though. Yeah, like she's the, like the main act, and I'm like the supporting act. No, but she's she's. A sidekick. It's, it's okay. all right. Don't worry. You know, we'll we'll okay. fight this out after. This. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love Charlotte like a brother, so yeah. we just allow. You already brought a zombie. He just needs. Hey, brother zombie, the moment, the first day. I don't even know why I did. Yeah. Little shirt I wore or something. Uh, when people, people host shows together on radio, especially. The dynamics are very interesting. Some people are actually just really cool friends. I mean, we saw um, Oscar get married to his yes. colleague, yes. to his co-host. Yes. Yeah, um, on, in Lagos as well. Yeah, there's some who are just catty every single time they're on air. Mm. What is your dynamic like? Um, I usually try to kill Shola. That's what happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you ever watch, like, you do it. No, it's very cool actually. Um, Shola and I have a, a, a relatively long history now. Um, he's actually the reason I'm in entertainment. Most people don't know. Shola oh. Thompson put oh. me in entertainment. Thank you yes. Very much. Officially. So, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we can relax with Bruce. <laughs> so, no, it's cool. Like, so, it's we beyond actually have radio. Quite a nice vibe. Even before radio. We've um, known each other. Well, it was radio because I, I used to work at another radio station. Yeah, okay. And Shola was the person that brought me in. Mm. So, I kind of pitched an idea. I didn't know. You know, I, I kind of quit regular law practice. <laughs> I was like, oh, you okay. failed lawyers. What will I do? Shout out, Shout out. Listen, the legal minds are running the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I will have you know. Um, but Shola gave me a shot, basically, when everyone else was like, well, who? He was like, listen, come back tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. So, yeah. mm. so why did you go That's back cool. to radio? Um, because I love radio. Radio is literally like my first love. It's probably the most freeing, or one of the most freeing um, uh, creative forms. Mm -hmm. I think like most creatives tend to dabble in several things. Um, some people like produce as well. You do all these things. So it takes a while to find the creative endeavor that you probably love really the most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, radio is, if not my first love, and I, I think it probably is my first love, okay. um, but it's, it's the second most expressive like form for me, like mm. radio. So After Acting. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, say something nice about her. She said a lot yeah, of nice things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, she's a, probably a very brilliant lady and uh well okay yeah that's all you got <laughs> and how long did it take you to work she's, on that she's very she's actually pretty brilliant and to be honest i actually normally don't tell anybody this it scares me sometimes you know because i'm thinking you know when i was uh, you know doing the show myself i was thinking oh yeah you know i got this you know hey i'm the best and as you came by and i realized i'm stumbling on my words sometimes or maybe i'm trying to actually just you know check out my vocabulary She's a lawyer, so you can imagine yeah. also arguing on air. Lacuna. So you never, you never actually this get to win all the time. <laughs> I love that word. Don't, you, don't even know, know what it means. How long have you been on radio for? I've, I've been on radio for 13 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, 13 years. It's been quite a journey, actually. It's been amazing. Quite a journey. What's your story like? Were you dragged into it? Like, <laughs> like how? No, actually, the real, the real truth or? is I remember, well, well kudos to Femi Olagbaye, just like, uh, you know, with her. He, uh, he, he had an audition I was doing for radio personalities for Rhythm at the time. And uh, he asked me, uh, you know, he didn't even ask me. He said, hey, you know, he was just in the room, Unilag at the time. And he was like, hey, you know, I'm doing this audition, you know. And I was like, hey, you should try something with some of the guys you're auditioning. I was about, you just ask them to do something about movies, you know, because I, I'm really, I really love movies, I'm big on movies. So he was like, hey, you have a pretty good voice. Yeah, you should audition. And I did, and uh, as they say, the rest is history. So it was fun. That's the abridged version. Shola has got people married on radio. <laughs> like, people don't. No, I'm serious. Like, listen, this is the original yeah. radio killer. I mean, 13 yeah. years. Yeah. 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. We, we tried. We tried. We tried. We tried. So, it's, so do you think a lot that, has happened. 
you yeah. would like to dabble in something else eventually? Well, or? actually, I have. Um, there was a movie, a short of movie recently. Don't go. You know, <laughs> you were <laughs> you were acting in it, or you? <laughs> I, no, no, I directed. Oh, you, oh okay. Uh, Tosi Ego. So uh, it stars Victor Akimani, Wally Ojo, Yvonne Vixen, Badge. Oh. Yeah. And Vixen why Joe. wasn't I on the bill? Stop, Stop trying to get work from our guests all, all the time. All she Why does. did you not call you know, me? Because, yeah, because, because, because I remember seeing you one of those, one of those uh, auditions. Oh, really? And I was like, yeah, you know, what's up now? How you doing, girl? And she was like... Whatever, gay. She brothers on me just like Foolish Cat. In the zone. I like that. <laughs> so, I like zone. That. Didn't even give me time. At least Fulu heard me for about a minute or three. You know, but she, she was just like, no, zone, now, go there. I was like, I'm sorry. And we are here. Thank did you, you Did you ever think it would be like that? I did it. I did it. If I knew, I would have fixed myself. Uh, I don't know if you guys get asked this. What do you hate the most about your job? Holidays, we don't get holidays. No. Yeah. Yes. So, so when, when it's uh, Christmas, Christmas, New Year. That's it, oh, yeah, yeah. But you no get day, like, no day, please. you get your basic um, travel leave. for the year, leave for the oh, year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. What, so you, like I mean, but that's media all over. We don't get holidays. Really? You, you guys mm, don't get yeah. holidays. Yeah, we don't get holidays either, but, but the no. thing is, I understand your point because yeah. it's a holiday. Yeah. Even if I had 300 days of leave, that, it's, it's a, a holiday. holiday. You understand? Yeah. Like everybody is yeah. just yeah. chilling. Yeah. 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 And if you're a Monday to Friday <laughs> person, exactly. <laughs> Same with Because yeah. people are at home on holiday yeah. and listen to the radio, so you okay. better be there. So unless it falls <laughs> on a day where you actually have a day off, like if you don't work on Sundays or Saturdays and, and that's, that's the day you have off, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Sorry. We'll see you at nine. What's the hardest part about like working on radio? Hardest? Because this is, I don't know, because I, I kind of left radio for a good, a, a little stretch of time and I've been doing it. Honestly, like everything just feels, I'm probably still in the honeymoon phase of like, yeah. ah, this is so fun. <laughs> I love it all. Um, maybe so the hardest part to to work. would be that it is, it, it's like live broadcast. Yeah. As soon as you yeah. go, you go. And, and your information has to be correct. That's probably it, and you have to keep checking because you do have radio stations where people don't check their facts and they say whatever. And the reality is, a lot of people out there rely on, on what they hear on radio. Yeah. If you want to know when the public holiday is, you're yeah. like, did they say it on the radio? Mm -hmm. If you want to know like opinions that you think you have yourself, you heard it on radio or on TV. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think the hardest part is for me is just kind of making sure I check the facts and be like, okay, is this right? And I'm like, I said, Shola, Shola, is it the right thing? Do we, do we check it? <laughs> yeah, okay. that's probably cool. it. <laughs> All right, we're uh, gonna go on a quick break now. When we come back, we have our topic of the day. Stick around for that. Welcome back, guys. We are still here on the spot with the lovely Folu Storms and Shola Thompson. And uh, yeah, we've been learning a bit more about them, but it's time now for our topic of the day, which is independence in Africa. Because? Because? Go is everything tomorrow? all right? Because tomorrow is October 1st. No, it's not. Which yes, is? Yes, it is, which is Nigeria's... Um, are you okay? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Is it the heat? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow is independence. Nigeria's tomorrow is Nigeria's independence. Nigeria is fifty-five. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's, that's a big deal. Five-five, yeah. man. Uh -uh. Yeah. You guys have grown up. Grown up. Independent <laughs> shimmy. Yeah. It's a shame you haven't got all your stuff together, but we'll get there. Let me date. What? It's not the time. <laughs> what do we do? We don't do barbecue cookouts or anything here. We don't. Just turn up, man. Straight up. <laughs> Jollof rice. Green white green. Jollof rice. Jollof rice. Jollof rice. Jollof rice. Yeah. 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 Our small chops. Yeah. 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 And just shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But that's actually not what we're talking about per se. We're yes. talking about individual independence. Independence, yes. And how so, that's yeah. affected like in Africa. So um, being young and being an independent person, like on your own, independent mm. thought, independence financially, independence emotionally. How does African culture sort of affect that? Does it even affect it at all? So that's kind of what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, well, does it affect know. it? Yes. Yes, it does affect it. So we can it. end the show now. Okay, well, thank you for stopping by, guys. It's I was see you later. Up. Let's take a selfie. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. No, I, I think I think it's interesting. Our sense of independence in in, yeah. in Africa, in I'll say Nigeria, since I mean that's it's my country and that's where I've seen the most, um, is is very it's different, different, especially when you've been elsewhere or seen how they approach independence elsewhere. Mm. So if you're in the UK or in the US, 16, 18, you've got a job. 
you're buying your own, you're paying your own bills, you know, you're, you're paying your own um, school fees, for example, or whatever. You're, you're sort of out there as an adult and you're treated that way legally by your parents, by your family, not in all circumstances, but in, in, but in general you are. In Nigeria, you see people who are 30, 35, even 40. Their bills still get paid by mommy and daddy. Still you know, um, their expenses mm -hmm. are still paid by them. They still live at home. Um, you know, those kinds of things. So the way we see independence is mm. is warped. If other people, so yeah, it's, it's just different. very different. Yes. Right? Um, it's also very gender based too. So mm. you culturally, you know, the men are supposed to be a lot more um, independent and especially financially and security wise um, so that they can then take care of the women family. so yeah. take care of family and so on so you have younger women who don't feel like they even have to be independent do or do anything yeah. because okay. I just have to sit here and wait till it comes and everything else I'll gets be in my mommy and daddy's house and yeah. then I'll go to my husband's house I, I think that comes a little bit um, and maybe some people at home might agree but our general the general African family dynamic is where you start from and where we we typically or traditionally would live in extended families. So everyone in their family, even if you're growing and you have your own family or nuclear family, you would live in the same kind of family compound, Yeah. sort of. And I think as, as the years have gone by and it's like, okay, yes, the nuclear families are now on their own, but that concept, parents still kind of keep it with there. their kids. They want to know very much what you're doing, blah, blah. You know, for women, as you said, yeah. gender as well. Why are you talking about moving out of your father's house? Yeah. This was a shock to me. I didn't know this was a big issue. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I studied away for a bit and I, I, you know, I came back and I was talking about I'm moving with my cousins, we we'll have a nice party. I was all yeah. sex in the city, it's going to be so. My dad said, what, what are you doing? Going to where? I'm going to where? You want to do something that you cannot do in your father's house? Yes. I was like, I'm sorry, what? You know, I thought I was helping you. And yeah. to the point where I remember one argument with my parents after, because I'm, I'm slightly divergent. I'm not, you know, I'm not a bad kid, but I am divergent. I like mm -hmm. to try things. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it got to this, like, you're too independent. And I just thought, wow. Mm. Okay. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say I was, I was, for me personally, I was actually kind of independent from, uh, at the age of 19. Mm. Strangely, yeah. Did and, you get kicked uh, out? Let, how, how do I describe this? That's a yes. Kind of. <laughs> I wasn't really kicked out. You ain't but, uh, Let me just say, you know, like, when you have, like, a stepfather situation and then, ah. You guys are like you're like kind of like a rebel and, mm. just because you know you're just not comfortable with the whole so you're yeah, moving from different houses and then at the time i actually uh, just started my first radio gig oh okay so everything just came came together, came together quite nicely yeah, okay. and then i was in lag as well so you know understanding independence from that aspect well i guess mine might be a little different mm. yeah because with most african parents you know for even ladies for example until you get married you can't exactly leave your father's yeah. house you have yeah. to be like even at whatever age you are, you're at, even yeah, if you're yeah. like 25, 26, 27, still 30. So you get 30, 30 yeah. yeah. Are you your parents no. don't want you Just to leave, yeah. yeah. That's and exactly how it works. Also, poor shoot men from your life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tomorrow, they'll say, but you have not brought anybody. I I excuse me. Uh, I I've been here. Will I see them in your house? <laughs> no. I heard that also culturally that um, they tend to, families tend to get rid of, well, especially for the Yoruba tribe, that they tend to get rid of the girls first before getting rid of the boys. Well, in, so ge you, I mean, in general, guys get married uh, later in life or when they're older. Like a guy will, typically, a guy won't get married when he's 25. But if a girl comes to you at 25 and says, I'm getting married, it's not a surprise. No, you know what I mean? So in that sense, is that what you, you mean? No, I, it was just something that I heard. Okay. Yeah, that apparently that's yeah. like the guy The guy getting married that's at 25 order. is like, the party mm. starting at 10 and you leave at, leave at 11. No. <laughs> wow, hey, no, no. Wow, hey, no. Why? No. Why? Wow. <laughs> I'm no. sorry. Okay. So there's an ideal age for marriage, you think? Personally? Yeah, personally. Of personally, course. I feel, I feel, if it was possible, yes, this is what I would advice young men. I don't know why. I'm, talk, talk to them. I'm a little different. I'm a little different. <laughs> I would say, have a kid, 26, 27, and then get married much later. Wow. I'm very, oh, so hey, you can grow up with your kid. You know, when your kid is, you're 25, right? Your kid is... 25 you're 50 you're still you still have a little okay you know, so have the you. kids early yeah and then yeah then but if you want to get married well you have to do some research you know what i'm saying like figure out exactly what it is you're looking for you know so ladies saying? you've heard it's it's my own it's, it's he, my he own just thing. told he you just don't, don't listen, listen to him I don't listen to him just with all the guys in your life <laughs> but then again, speaking of that independent yeah. thing, I don't think that it's necessarily bad that parents sometimes want you to be a bit closer because, I mean, the, the world we're growing in is a, is a bit different. And then now what we're finding is women especially, this is my biggest concern because you are having a lot of women who are getting married very, very young mm -hmm. because they feel like, 
o'clock. Yes, yeah, so o'clock. You have is to do it now. Yeah. And they're seeking, and also because they're getting frustrated at home. They're looking for that. They're like, oh, please, I'm tired. She has got me in your house. If I leave your house now, you don't have anything to say. You yeah. Can't. And people are like, oh, next guy. You say you want to marry? Let's, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. You know? yeah. and, and guys here know this. They're like, that's the new scope. They're like, you know, my pastor told me that, that you are the one. And other such stories. I saw it in a dream. I'd be like, yeah, that was my nightmare. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, you know, and I'm not saying that everyone that says that is, is, is incorrect or that if you're young and you're getting married, it's a bad thing. But in our search for independence, are we just blindly looking for independence or Ooh. are we, you know, let's trying to figure ponder. out Food for who thought. we take, Let's Sorry, take I do this. That, yeah. <laughs> we're going to come back to that because that's, yeah. a, that's a good point. That's a good uh, we're going to go on a quick break here. Uh, we'll see you guys right after this. Welcome back. You're still watching the sport and we're talking independence in Africa. Um, I want us to move to raising children here. Okay. Um, you find that in the, in the developed world, we've talked about a lot, you know, where independence happens earlier than it happens here. Do you think that compared to them, we are more attached to our parents and that's why we get independence later? Or they're just better able to draw the line when it's time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same thing. I don't, and also their system there I don't know that yeah. we're closer per se. Because I know no. that they are very hands on with raising kids. Yeah. So how do how are they able to just do the I, I think there are a lot of facilities and things in place that allows people to be more independent at a younger age outside. Yeah. So if you're um, 16 or 18 and you can't they, buy they can be a job for you. or, or yes. they can't be a job for you or you have to have a certain type of um id or something like there's it's a system it's, there's a system that works and it's been built for that and yeah. it's also been built to protect those people at those ages yeah yeah so everything's so, pretty mm. much been put into place because if you yeah. want it for example if you're okay well not in the uk because you know housing is a big thing but like let's say in the, in the us for example if you're 18 and you want to move out you can find a place within your budget um, you can find, um, you can get a car loan or a second-hand car with a car with a, with a with a with a you know monthly payment. You can get a job at a grocery store and wherever, wherever and still have enough to you know to pay for all those things. You can do all those things. Here, it's I'll, I don't know about the rest of Africa, so I'll say at least in Nigeria, if you want to move out and you're 18, if you're unless you're stinking rich already. Yeah. You're not you're not working a monthly job per se. So you either have to have the money to late to put down two years worth of rent, plus your furniture, plus your generator, plus your petrol money, plus your internet. If you're buying a car, you're buying it outright more mm. often than not. So our that systems are species. not yeah, in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a system in which you can do things piecemeal. You have to have it all figured Together. out. And most people don't have it all figured out by that age here. But, but then anywhere. having said that, I still go back again to this idea of family and the way that people feel about family here, which, okay. is, which I, I honestly think is the fundamental difference in this independence mm -hmm. story. Because, okay, fine. The system or the structure may not be there. And it's true because in London, you can, you can go get loans, you can do all this stuff. But in Nigeria, you can you can run away from home and live on the streets relatively with not too much money. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Okay. Like, if you, and and if you look at, because let's look at the social strata that we have in this country. Because I mm -hmm. think we're assuming as well that it's everyone that's at this small one percent. Yeah. If we're being generous, call it a five percent top end. Yeah. The average guy on the street, really, what's he living off of? Yeah. His kids are already out working. They're like, listen, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, 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 go but, and sell. But yeah. the kids would not think. Necessary, like you wouldn't want to just cut off from your parents. Yeah. I think that's the big deal. Like, if even if even for people who are in a slightly better financial situation, you say, okay, even if I want to leave the house and I could afford to, because for whatever reason, maybe I've hammered one mm -hmm. deal has shown up in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go, parents. Goodbye. Then the nurse starts. Ah, you want to what? leave? Your mother was that something will happen. Like you <laughs> you're this thing. You won't be able to do it. Will not but I have to be honest, yeah. though, based uh, from how Ibuka actually constructed the question mm. with the way kids are raised I'll, I'll have to say from let me just start from there precisely I'm, I'm not sure in Africa we actually have we I would say we wing it in many cases we wing <laughs> it and then hope for the best but you actually have the some people hearing? actually yeah, yeah. Ah, I don't know Wait, I, think everybody but, but, I don't think so I think, I think everybody you, wings you it yeah to, you just you say not, not, maybe, maybe mostly in Africa but I think maybe in some other places outside Africa I'm sure some people will actually read a book 
for example, birth. let me let me say oh, you're about to give birth, okay. for example, yes? You would oh, read a book. Okay. If yeah. you're uh, educated. So what then again, can you're expecting. Yeah. Don't have the luxury of, um, if you think about the average woman. Average yes, they don't have the luxury of affording a book. But, but, but still, they can, they, they can actually be more concerned about, okay, yes, what, what would I want to do to, you know, Tunde or Yemi or, you know, uh, Uche at, uh, when he turns 15? Will it be time for him to actually learn how to, you know, grow his entrepreneurial skills or, you know, so yeah. things like that. So yeah. you realize, as I said, you, you find out most parents are actually just wing it. Like, okay, he's, he's well taken care of. You know, he's going to school. He's fit. All right, yeah. So, uh, you know, he doesn't follow bad gang, yeah. as you see. <laughs> you know, he's all right. Okay, yeah, so I'm doing pretty good. But there's more to it. You know, there's so much more. Like, mm. he, how, how is he saving? Mm. Am I giving him money? Am I giving him lunch money? Is he saving lunch money? You want to get that shoe? Have you saved enough to buy that shoe? So yeah. those type of questions, I, I yeah. believe, as far as raising kids are concerned, you know, like they can do a little more. Yeah. Yes, we all, we never do, but hey, good job, good job. <laughs> what do you think? You asked the question. What do you think? I I I think, for the most part, I don't I don't know that there's a connection with the raising part per se and the cutting of parts. Okay. You know mm. what I mean. I was, I was I asked you to see whether anybody thought there was, but I don't mm -hmm. think there is. Mm -hmm. I think what it is here, I think <coughs> basically what everybody has said is, I don't want to use the word blame, but I think Nigeria is probably the reason, the biggest reason. Some parents would would want to would want you to go. Yeah. I mean, even if not go go, I mean start start Do earning it, money. Yeah, be. Yeah, it, and I, I know, yeah, if, I, know if I have friends, I have family who I have teenagers, and I'll be like, it would be nice for her to have a summer job. Yes. You know, <laughs> but what is a summer job in Nigeria? Yeah. You know. So the, you don't Let's have go the, and do that. There's a building. Yeah. Just exactly. gonna be a bricklayer, real yeah. quick. Exactly. Real so for quick. a lot of people, it's yeah. There's really nothing you can do because yeah. the environment, the situation has left you yeah. basically helpless. So you you just get lesson teacher for one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when is one thing? How many lessons did you teach? <laughs> what? Because hey, many times. One. Theory will say one thing and be like, yeah, we want you, but the day you now get so much job, wherever it is you get, they're like, oh, I don't want to come home at this time because I'm doing what? 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 What do you say? What do you say? What is that? Oh, yeah. and, my you friend, know, if you are not home at seven o'clock, I'm, I'm wow. I'm going yeah. to this thing we're talking about people reading books. Part of allowing your child to be independent or raising your child to be able to get to a level where they're independent early on mm -hmm. is arming them with, with knowledge the tools and with yes, tools. basic things like even sex education. Yes. I don't know about you guys. What? I didn't get that education. Yeah, How? A, I didn't, a, it bees and what? Thing. You're like, why? Where? What are you doing? Sex education are all to the Simpsons. They're not. Well said. <laughs> We're going to take a break. <laughs> Let's talk about we'll be right sex. back with more on the spot. Please stay with us. Hey guys, welcome back. You're still watching the spot, and we are talking independence. Um, and before the break, these people are bad people. We are talking about sex, but I wasn't talking about sex with them. What mm -hmm. do you want to say? There's something she touched on. Yeah. Um, earlier about gender. Mm -hmm. are, the, are, there, are there different standards for independence? Yes. yes. Not even just Nigeria, I'm talking of generally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, always. Yeah. Always, always, always. All over. I mean, we, we've we talked about this thing in different ways. Mm. There's always a double standard. Women Does almost always not, get. Not a. With independence? I'm thinking about growing up in London. Yeah, okay. So. In London, as a as a woman, you always you would always make sure that you had your own, because British men always hmm. gave you the impression that look, we're always doing Dutch, we're always doing you bring your percentage, I bring my percentage. <laughs> so nobody ever wanted to really take full on responsibility. So and then here, there's a difference. I sit, I relax, and I wait. And not not do, me in and particular. You, <laughs> <laughs> and I just wait for things to just kind of come together. Yeah. But I had a question before. Oh. Um, when do you think you found your independence? Or have you found it? Wasn't at what age? Mm. Yeah. Oh. It's an interesting... <laughs> that one is an interesting, interesting, very interesting question. Yeah. Um, I want, first of all, I still live with mommy and daddy. Please don't kick me out. Thanks. <laughs> um, parents. Yeah. Shout out and to mommy's And I will story. say that, uh, that that's... And that's not for lack of trying to break free. I think <laughs> since, I, since I was about... 
10, 11. Like, you know, I, I was a big reader. That's the first thing. I think my parents did fund me with a lot of books. I would go through books like a day, like go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And I was very into fantasy books, adventure. So the idea of travel, of leaving, of going to places has been with me for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to boarding school. I so desperately wanted to go to boarding school. And the, and I did do like um, ACO, uh, DCA College. I did like the exam for all these different boarding schools. And my dad didn't want me to go there, not because well, I don't know what his reasons were, um, but there was a day when he was angry with me because I messed up, and it came out as a threat. In the back of my mind, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I, I found my independence. Um, I finally went to boarding school when I was 14, um, and that was outside of Nigeria. So I think from then on, I was like, I'm, I'm free. I'm, I'm on my own. And since then, I've kind of more or less been doing what I want to do. Mm. Um, and even when I come home, I subliminally message my parents into what I want to do. So yeah. I, I, from that perspective, yeah. It's caused fights, but, yeah. you know, they yeah. love me now. <laughs> what about you? Um, in my mind, going off to boarding school was a moment. Um, I know my first year in secondary school, it's 10-11, I was dying. I mean, I was happy to go. Then I realized, oh my God, I don't want to do this really. <laughs> you know, I just want to sit at home and watch Sky. <laughs> yeah. And then I loved it. So from then, I, my, in my mind, yes, I was mostly doing my own thing. But of mm -hmm. course, like you said, this is not a country where you just move out. Mm. I mean, I turned 18, where are you going to? Then again, I studied a course that I, can, I studied law. And law in Nigeria is like 800 years <laughs> <laughs> until mm, yeah. I graduated university. Yeah. So the moment I graduated from university, that was when I was able to leave the house and mm -hmm. then do my thing. But up until yeah, that, I was... Mm. Independent minded ish, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah. at the attempts, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've always, I've always uh, been very independent minded, but I would say the moment for me was when I was 16. So when I got my national insurance card and I could work, so my, my first mm. job that was what did you do with your first salary? My first salary, I probably spent it on like credit and hanging out with friends. Yeah, those friends now. Is that like uh -huh. a watered-down version of that story? <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those friends, where are they now? Well, they're Western. working. They're working. They're, 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 they're working, Abby. They're working. I'm working. They're working. Yeah. yeah. Well, mine was a little bit. I don't know. I guess my independence sort of story was backwards. When I left Nigeria, I think I was about twelve or eleven, actually eleven. Um, when I went, when I started at uni, I felt yeah, because my sister and I lived together. We had our own place. We paid like our, we had to work so we could pay for like books and stuff our parents would pay tuition we do books so we did all that you know paying the car loan paying for your own apartment all that stuff and then when i moved back to nigeria that independence was sort of stifled because i also had to move back home mm -hmm. and all efforts to leave have been fruitless <laughs> so we're still working on that we're still, we're, still work, we're still working on that but financially and all that stuff it's been probably since like university days i mean they help but for the most part it's yeah isn't financial independence the best? Like yeah. it's the no, best. The moment yeah. you realize, don't yeah. you can't it's a double edge sword. Um, so, yeah, double edge sword. Very <laughs> of course it is, but, yeah, to, but it's see, nice. You pause. don't want to be financially independent in life. Yeah, never, because they just the rule thing. you. Eh, so you yeah. Gotta, yeah. Hey. So yeah. So and then you, and then when, and you know when you're like even if well, okay you, you live with your parents, yeah. but when you can do things for them too, they really yeah. appreciate it. They love it. The first guy gave me a shot on radio. Like it, my parents. This how my dad was looking at me because I used to work at his law firm. And then I quit. I actually called it a meeting. So you can imagine the tension every morning oh. in the house. All that children are helping their parents. Why are you? So I, so I would get so much stick, and it's like, oh, and you know, if I need to put petrol in the car or something, I'd run out of my last. But they're like, so if you had a job, mm, you have petrol. In. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh um, but that, that leads me to a question I actually wanted to ask you. Like, do you think that independence, therefore, is only when? physically you've moved out because we're talking about no, it's independence in my mind no, or, I, you know. I, I think it's emotional mental. independence is the is the last frontier sort of because there's a lot of people who they've lived they don't live in their family home but they're they controlled home. by right. daddy and yeah. mommy or whatever so that one is emotional mental independence that's okay. the that's yeah. the final frontier once you are able to do your own thing and make your own decisions not not guided or not boxed in by your family that's mm. when you know that you're fully, I think, is when you're fully like, okay, on your own. Independence mm. of thought is very important, I think. Very. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I, I became independent by force. 
Leave like, yes, hey, get out. And I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. And well, lucky for me, I was, yeah, obviously, there was, uh, I was making money. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I just found it. I found, and I had to be independent. But what I didn't like, what I didn't know at the time, which I regret very well, I re regret a lot, the fact that I, I didn't exactly understand, you know, the, uh, w what it means to actually save. Oh. So, you know, when that money came through, Went what? What? Young Blew it. I got money. What? Uh, this, this how you Music videos in my head. You know, <laughs> oh, my my this, just bawling. So basically, yes, I, I wish I, I, I learned a little more about saving Financing. because I'm pretty I sure I would have so I would have achieved so much more. But I'll be I'm, I'm very happy for the fact that, to be honest, I'm happy I was independent at that age mm -hmm. because I was, I was actually able to do a whole lot more. People mm -hmm. people would be surprised. You'd be able to do a whole lot more being independent at that age because you don't have anything. You're just yeah, you don't have you, you, you just feel like, oh, yes, OK, this is the world. I can just paint a picture. Mm -hmm. I'm not being guided by my parents or anybody to say, hey, look, these are paints between these lines. No, yeah, you're just like, right. hey, let's just go ahead and do Color, what I want to do. All, all over Have the world. fun. And yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty amazing uh, journey it's been. Awesome. Now, stuff. Now you talk about right. that. Okay. We're going to put you on pause, sorry, real quick. But well, when we come back, Ibuka has a burning question on his soul to ask. And we'll find out what that is when we come back. Hello guys, welcome back to The Spot and um, we've been talking about independence uh, before we uh, left for the break. Ibuka had a very pressing question. I can't remember. Then I'm it was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking about emotional attachment, mm -hmm. uh, dependence, you know, to family and all of that and how even when you move out, there's still that. So I think my, my point is, do you ever really become independent? Yes. Do you actually become completely independent? No, yes. I don't think so. Uh -huh. I think... I think that there are always yes, no. there's always going Pondering. to be one <laughs> nobody no you nobody can do it all perfectly all the time by yourself. I think there's always going to be a moment where you might need some form of assistance. Mm. So it might be from your parent, it might be emotional. So you have an issue that you felt like oh, I can handle it, I can handle it and you get to a point where you're like uh, maybe I really can't handle it. So dad, yeah. mom or whatever or you need they're in a position of influence and power. So you want to get somewhere and they know somebody who might be able to get you there like two steps faster or something. I don't think anybody can be like fully, mm. I don't need anybody. I can do so it all by huh? myself. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. see, maybe I'm looking at it. Maybe it's the way I'm looking at it. And that's why I said no, at least with the emotional part. I don't, I don't look at it as you, you literally cut everybody off. There's a difference between support and assistance and dependence where it's whatever they tell you're like a puppet you know what i mean like there are people who are grown who won't um who are dating somebody for example and if your the, their mom smiles at them funny they're like oh i can't even if they're yeah. in love with you they can't or if you know you have you have friends or you have a project that you want to do and you're passionate about the project and somebody in your family says i don't know if that's a good idea and you who are so into it and you have thought of all the pros and cons decided then oh okay well if she doesn't really like the idea then i probably mm. won't do it that's where I'm coming is, at it from. Is that that's though? emotional depend like that's when you that's when you're so you're so tied to what they think and their opinion and, and what they think about your life that you don't do anything independently because awesome. if they don't approve then then that means it must be wrong, even hmm. if it's right for you. Yeah. That's where I'm coming at it from. Okay. That's why I said there is yeah, yeah there is like a there's gotta be a line where you say, I'm a grown up, I can make my own decisions. Sometimes you make mistakes, but that is what life is about. You yeah. you have to fall and then learn that, oh, okay, don't take that path, take I'm, this path. I'm kind of leaning in, in Lamide's direction because I think, you know, are you talking about independent or being like a, an island? And no man really should be an island. That's right. I think that's a very dangerous thing when you think, do you know what, screw the rest of the world, I'm going to do this alone. Even with whether it's doing TV shows, you need a team. Yeah. Whether it's with just progressing in life, you are going to have a mentor, someone. Being entirely... Do you know what? I don't need. I don't need you. I need, like yeah. you are oh, man, going. You're jobs. gonna fail. You're going, <laughs> you're going to crash and burn. Yes. Like, you and then people will be like, "Hey, off. yeah, I see you burning yeah. there. Sorry." Yeah. You may start <laughs> off like this, but you'll get to a point because you require help from other people. Other people's experience lend some kind of support system to your kind of experience and things yeah. you want to do. It yeah. can be a helpful thing. So I just think. Attempting to cut off entirely, no matter how frustrating the parents are, no matter how frustrating the family members <laughs> you are. Need I like I like to feel like I take everything people say with a pinch of salt. I'm like, okay, I will allow you to speak. Yeah. 
I'm stubborn enough to do what the heck I want to do. Mm -hmm. But Take somewhere along the way, just by the act of being silent and letting you air your opinions, yeah. maybe later down the line, it something will, you said will I'd resonate. Like, Yo, yeah. Maybe. I think, I I think yeah. it's based. On, I think it's based on how you're raised, though. As far as the emotional uh, independence is concerned, it's really based on how you're raised. If you're raised by really strict parents, like really tough on you, trying to make sure that some parents actually go out of their way to make sure that you become emotionally independent. Oh, yeah. Some types of subconsciously, sometimes, sometimes, you know, consciously. consciously. So I feel it's really based on how you're raised. If you're raised in a way that's like, you know, if you're trying to depend on your parents all the time and try to caution you every single time you do this, obviously you become more emotionally independent but if yeah. you're like hey don't worry just come hey you have any have any issues no don't worry come to mommy yeah mm -hmm. then you probably grow up to be more dependent we have That's to sadly cut you guys off right now because it's time for us to go it was a nice thank you um, so much for coming over it was a good conversation yeah. yeah what do we call this anonymous um Anonymous. Not, in, 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 independent, 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 Dep dependent, rebel, diverge. We'll figure that out. <laughs> we'll figure it out and let you know. Emotional and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Freedom searches. <laughs> uh, freedom that's a good, searches. Freedom searches. <laughs> <laughs>